Thanks for joining us here on Idaho Today. You have to check out premier restaurant, The Lively. It is dedicated to offering the ultimate sushi dining experience by offering top-notch authentic flavors with fish direct from the Tokyo market and miso that award-winning chef Edward personally crafted for over a year. It's a culinary dream that you'll find only in Japan, but one that you are lucky enough to actually enjoy right here in the Treasure Valley. So save the cost of a flight to Tokyo and pull up to the table at the Lively. Chef, what are you prepping for tonight? So tonight we are doing our grand finale sushi dinner. Every month we, on the third Wednesday, we do a, a sushi preparation in our speakeasy room. Okay, and then what does an evening like this entail though? A lot of preparation, because we do bring in a lot of ingredients. We try to be as authentic as possible and work with just the best available ingredients, but also the traditional ingredients that you would use if you were doing this in Japan. So we fly in our seaweed, our fish, all of our ingredients coming from Japan, even down to the rice, um, you know, and then there's other things like the miso that we're serving tonight, which is something that was made with local organic ingredients by myself, but it took a approximately a year to ferment. So this one is what they call kimpira gobo. Kimpira just refers to anything that's sauteed with sesame and has a little bit of kick to it. So that's gonna come from chili in this one. So gobo is burdock root. So this is basically a sauteed burdock root carrot that's been sauteed with sesame, chili, and a little bit of sugar. So it's kind of like sweet, salty, a little bit of spice kick. Authentic down to every last detail. Yeah, and that's what we're kind of hoping to expose people to with this dinner, is just showing them nothing, it's nothing crazy, there's no like bells and whistles, it's not volcano rolls with uh, magma of sriracha mayonnaise. It's seemingly deceptively simple preparations with a lot of thought going in and respect for the, the historical context of it. So this is second course, it's a bit of a seasonal uh, one, so it's um, house miso um, that I fermented over the last year with a little bit of tofu and uh, Groves Country Mushrooms, which is a local mushroom company. And so, weather's getting a bit colder, so I was thinking soup and then mushrooms for the fall. And I think the reddish color kind of reminds me of the turning of the leaves. This concept, though, here is coming from a very personal part of your background. So I lived um, in Japan for six years, and I could go to Tsukiji Market, which is right in the middle of the city, and shop for fish, and then 10 minutes later, walk it back to the hotel and just start you know, playing around with it, basically. And that's kind of where I started to really learn and develop an eye for the ingredients and the quality of the ingredients, but also to learn to respect the food itself and the season. This is called a kakiage. So it's uh, basically, it's a type of tempura, julienne of some vegetables in this case, carrot, um, onion, and then we use some local tendrils that we get from um, basil and beet microgreens, some pea tendrils, some sunflower shoots, mix it up with the tempura batter, and then at the last minute throw in a little bit of the, um, the baby Hokkaido Bay scallops. And then we serve it with a matcha green tea uh, salt. And how important is the role of the quality of the fish? And like you'd mentioned, the miso that you'd fermented over a year. How important is that when it comes to the experience that you're trying to create tonight? I think it's the utmost importance. It's all the detail. What we're trying to do is exactly what they would do in Japan. And in Japan, it's all just about the details. A little bit of grated daikon, shiso leaf, and then some orakang salmon from New Zealand has been uh, marinated with sake mirin, soy, and a little bit of citrus, which is typically added in, in this case, uh, shaved lime. So I just take that lime, uh, squeeze it on there, and then all of those flavors should be balanced out by the natural bitterness from the caramelization of the, the marinade. So basically, you can have an authentic Japanese experience, but in Boise, Idaho. Exactly, that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying not to get in the way of the food or the actual authentic transmission of the experience, if that makes sense. Yeah, no it does. And is this a great example of how you're trying to kind of push 
the, the palette or, or the opportunities when it comes to the food scene here in, uh, in the Treasure Valley? I think so, and I think pushing the palette is a, is a good way of looking at it because one of the things that I struggled with a lot moving back and forth between New York and Tokyo was adjusting my palette and therefore my seasoning and my approach in the kitchen to the place I was in at the time because in Japan everything is subtler but subtler because everyone is actually in tune with the natural flavors and they're able to appreciate it on a level that we weren't always able to in the West, you know, with our reliance on salt as our primary seasoning, etc. So this is what you're here for. So this one is the sushi course. You have toro that's been lightly torched, hirame, which is flounder, uh, a little bit of um, quickly boiled taco or, or octopus leg, and then shima aji, which is kind of mackerel. And then next to it is a preparation that you typically see in like Kansai, it's called batera. It's a pressed sushi. And then that one is just with uh, lightly poached uh, ebi or shrimp. So I think that's what it, it, we're really trying to bring here is um, open people's eyes to the experience and the appreciation for the subtle natural flavors of the ingredients that we're presenting.